All right, so welcome everybody. Happy New Year's. It's now Wednesday or Monday, January the 2nd. It's 2023. That is quite unbelievable that we are now into the new year. You guys can see my sexy face. Yeah, what's up, guys? I feel really good. Went into the New Year's, working out, and uh, just eating well and being sober. And usually I'd have like, you know, too much drugs around me, enough to kill a small country like the Philippines. <laughs> but uh, not this year. I decided to actually be a little bit more sober than I, I normally was. And um, Happy New Year's, everyone. I hope you've had a really good one. You know, the thing about every year is like people make these resolutions to try to better themselves. And that's great, right? But try not to set up these promises that might make you fail on purpose that are too demanding. It's better to, in my opinion, to just stay focused and disciplined on one single task and try to improve it every single year. For example, myself this year, I'm going to try to exercise a lot more and stay healthier. But I've been doing that for like two, three months already. So hopefully it's going to be a good year. So I've got a new course coming out. It is going to blow you guys away by the price. It's going to be about 30 hours long. And I'm not going to talk about the price yet, but it's going to be something where you're like, what the fuck? It's may as well give it to me for free. That the only reason I'm charging for it is because it's going to take about 150 hours to film. And the course is going to be about 30 hours. And I just want to break even on takes going away from the course or going away from trading. It'll probably be somewhere between 100 to 200. I'm guessing like 125 for a 30 hour course. And the 30 hour course is gonna cover this. I'm gonna show you guys it. It's gonna be so good. I stayed up for the past like three nights just kind of um, kind of looking at what the course is gonna be about, okay? And this is what the course is gonna be on. <clears throat> so the course is gonna be brand, it's brand new content. It's stuff I've never talked about. Okay, it's going to be 2017, 2021. This, this is the course you want. Trust me, for like $125. It's going to be affordable so everyone can get it. And it's going to be like, it's something you're going to really, really want. Trust me. And I'm actually going to edit it instead of talk all the way through like my other courses. So it's going to be engaging with uh, captions, subtitles, like graphics, the whole nine yards. I'm going to go all out on this course because I want you guys to know exactly what I'm thinking. So I sat there and thought to myself, like, what is going to be a good thing to do? And what's going to be good to focus on for the next bull market? So I started to divide down and start to fine tune the topics. And these are going to be it. We're going to talk about just an introduction, 2017, 2021 bull market experience, what I've learned from it. And then we're going to talk about building the portfolio as well and why it's important, investing versus trading. What are my hottest coins? And I'm going to go into the fundamentals of them. I'll go over the portfolio, the spreadsheet, the recommended distribution, and the long-term strategy for holding. And then I'm going to talk about the ideal conditions for a bull market. Like what is really the conditions for a bull market to happen? Okay. And how are we going to get into it? So the bull market versus the bear market cycle, we're going to talk about the logarithmic regression band, the fair market value, the market cap and BTC dominance, drawdown, regulations, inflation, and macroeconomic factors. And this is going to be like really, really detailed. It's going to be different than other things that you've seen me talk about before. But I actually do watch probably three to four hours of Bitcoin news a day. I just stay away from the fundamental side, but it's going to be important as we go into the bull market to know exactly what you guys um, what you guys need to know. And then we're going to go over identifying a bull market. Okay, how do you identify it? And the strategies I'll be using is EMA, Golden Crossovers, ATR, Chandelier Exits, Elliott Wave Theory, and Impulse Waves. So those will be kind of the five, six main identifying factors of a bull market for me. And then we're going to go over how to find these volatile coins. But just to be clear, chapter five, six, and seven, they kind of, they intertwine, okay? They intertwine immensely and they will be so detailed. Chapter five will be more basic where we talk about the market scan routine, building the watch list, so your trading view scanner, what it is. Then we'll talk about tracking coins, how to keep track of them, configuring trading view scanner, and programming something called iMacros, which helps me automate the scanning process by clicking on certain fields and changing the, the scanner for me. So it's always refreshing. So that's something that I've always done, but I just don't talk about it much. 
And then there's trading uh, criteria to long. We're going to talk about all of these criteria with the MACD RSI. For example, where do they need to be for us to long? Or do they even matter in some search situations? Elliott Wave Theory, the Pattern Criteria, the EMA, the ATR, the Chandelier Exit. We're going to get heavy into ATR and Chandelier Exit because I've been secretly using them on the side. I'm not talking about them because it's something I want to integrate into the bull market strategy later. And then we'll talk about volume and price action as well. And then, this is the best part, we're going to talk about the identifying week, uh, how to enter along. So we're gonna, chapter 7, 8, and 9 is, oh, this is supposed to be 9, by the way. 8 and 9 will be, when you enter along, what do you do during the trade? How do you manage it? And how do you exit it? So it's going to be like precise information about what I do. It'll talk about identifying weekly gainers, first wave formations, second and fourth wave consolidations, third and fifth wave breakouts, third and fifth wave dips, and sloped resistance and EMA breaks. And then during the between, in between the trade, that's where it's really important. It's going to talk about uh, setting trailing stops, reading Chandler exit on multiple time frames, shedding or increasing position sizes. So we're not going to do a lot of that amateur trading where you enter only one position, right? One big position, your maximum size, and then you kind of just exit with your maximum as well. We're going to talk about shedding and increasing as well. For example, if you're entering on a third wave, right? And you're not sure, you're not sure in that third wave if it's, if all five sub waves are done or not, it might be a third. So you're going to take some off of the table, right? You're going to take some t off the table, but it takes a really big and experienced person to take some off the table. And then perhaps you would buy on strength. You would lose some profit, but you would minimize your risk of it actually being at the top already and then losing more of your profit if you were to hold. So we're going to go over many different advanced strategies, uh, like the same strategies you would use when I'm trading like 500,000 to a million to 1.4, right? Like last year. So I didn't just take profit all at once. I'm taking profit in intervals depending on my bias and also setting trailing stops as well, right? As I'm shedding my position. So that's really important to start trading like I'm like a million dollar trader if you're going to eventually get there anyways. And then we're going to talk about how to exit, like the signs to exit the trade. Why do you need to exit the trade, right? Exactly what signs to look for. That's going to be key to figuring out if you should stay in the trade or not. Some signs may be, what are some signs of strength or momentum loss? What are hard resistances? What's Elliot, What's the Elliott Wave Theory counting? What's the exit, uh, chandel, sh excuse me, chandelier exit and ATR saying? What's the price action saying? What's the MACD and R size saying as well? So these are going to be the main strategies I use. And to be quite honest, day trading, I plan to make anywhere between a million to five million dollars in profit day trading in the next bull market. Last bull market in 2021, I made over seven figures and it was a low seven figures to be honest because I still wasn't prepared for it. Like 2017 prepared me for 2021, but not that prepared, you know? And then 2021 and 2017 now, they're going to prepare me for the next bull market. And I've got a lot of experience and now the ultimate strategy is coming in. Okay, so let's get into Bitcoin. Okay, so I'm keeping cash on hand now, guys. I'm keeping mainly cash on hand. I'm telling you, now Binance, I'm going to keep about $80,000, $87,000 on Binance. And I'm not going to go higher or lower. I'm not going to, every time I get over like ninety, dollars 100000 I'm just going to cash out and boom, straight to my bank it goes. And then, um, or not, sorry, not to my bank. It's going to go to my nano, the ledger, and I'm going to keep uh, my tether on there. So it's there's no point of sending it to your bank, honestly, and keeping cash there because there's fees. You know, there's freaking fees to get it back. If I want to put money from my bank account to Binance using their, their, their credit card feature, it's costing me like 6%. I don't want to pay 6%, so I'd rather just keep it on my ledger, as you guys should as well. Okay, so Bitcoin for the last year has been incredibly bearish, as we all know, okay? So let's talk about some of the bearish signs, starting one by one. Okay, let's let's go over, first of all, the 200 moving average. The 200 average mo moving average of mine is now blue. Okay, it's this guy right here that you see. Let's make it a little bit thicker so you guys can see it. So the 200 moving average is a comp it takes the previous 200 bars and it gives you the average price okay 
the average price of it, and there's always going to be one major resistance that's going to act as a resistance for all of them for a long period of time. And that one would be roughly somewhere between the 8-hour right, and, and the 12-hour axis of resistance. 8-hour gets above there, so not too much. So you want something a little bit higher. If you factor it over here, it would be the 8-hour. But if you, if you fact, or sorry, the 12-hour. But if you look at right around here, you'll see that every time on the 8-hour chart, we get to this moving average of 200 on the 8-hour it's pretty bearish. We just end up bull trapping a little bit and then we continue down. So if you take a look over here, the resistance is definitely going to be coming up soon. And because of many world economic factors, like such as inflation, I'll just go over it really briefly, but I'm not going to get the charts out because it's a pain to switch the charts on when I'm streaming on Discord. But if you go over like the logarithmic regression band, like man, we've got a ways to go. We've got at least 10 ways to go based off of history. And I don't think that Bitcoin is going to do something completely unique based off of how the economics are going in the world, based off of inflation, based off of the housing crisis right now. Everybody is in, is in recession right now, every country. So based off of that, I don't think we're going to just fly off of the charts. We're going to disrespect the regression ban that's been holding for 10 years now. So there's no way. So we've got like another 10% to go. That's one of the reasons why I changed my bias from 50-50 bearish bullish to 80% bearish now. That's how bearish I am. I'm very strong bearish. And that's why yesterday I liquidated over seven figures in the portfolio because I'm that bearish. So I'd rather have an opportunity to catch something incredibly low than to risk dropping another, say, 30% on Bitcoin and another... Actually, not 30. Like, if, if we go if we go to like say the 10k regions, right? That that's more than more than that. That's like 40 percent. We could drop, which means alts could drop another 40 to 80 percent. I don't want to risk seeing like a million dollar portfolio diminish down to 200 thousand dollars. You know, that would be just friggin' devastating for me because of my mismanagement. So I made the executive decision to start shedding yesterday and I shed 80% of my position size, only holding a little bit now. And then when there's another dip because of my bias being so strong, that's where it's going to be added. If you also take a look at the fair market value price of Bitcoin right now, Bitcoin is severely undervalued. But just because it's severely undervalued doesn't mean we should jump into it right now. What it means, if you look on the chart based off of all the other previous bear markets in 2014, 2018, 2020, what we found out is that we were undervalued based off of fair market value for a very long period of time. So right now, to me, it just doesn't look like the right time to buy. We cannot break above any major EMAs, okay? On the daily, the 200 EMAs blue, we simply cannot break above it. Also, if you take a look at the chandelier exit indicator, so the chandelier exit's different than EMA. Okay, the way that it's used or what it is is it gives you the average volatility based off of I set it for 14 bars. So based off of the average volatility, we see that it has never since since basically February, okay, since February here, actually not February, since April the 11th last year. It has never been able to break above a two-day volatility. So the volatility ever since April for 14 days consistently has never been volatile enough to actually break the resistance. So you see it tries to break it there, but it completely fell back down. So this is one major strategy in a bear market, okay? In a major bear market is this. You identify a long-term trend line, okay, then that's this right here. So let me just show you guys one of the most powerful bear market strategies that I've been working on. So this is what you see from, from uh, bar replay, okay? You see that? So you don't enter it on the break. Okay, the entering it on a break is really risky. And a lot of people, a lot of professionals out there with like millions of dollars, they're not going to enter in a break. They're going to enter it on a retest once confirmation is done. All that this break tells you is that, is that, um, it's the trend has now been official to continue to the downside. 
once a major drop like this happens. The ideal one would be to catch this one though, okay? The ideal one would be to catch this one. So this one, for example, once it breaks and the ATR indicator has been establishing a resistance, it breaks down, you don't enter it yet. You let it retest the ATR, okay? You let it retest the ATR and then you can, once you see the rejection, that's where you can short it. Let's say you apply the same strategy to here. Okay, now it breaks down, obviously we know, but you don't enter it yet. So it looks like it's going up right now, right? Looks like it's going back up, but it gets rejected. So you could enter it there, absolutely, okay? But a lot of people wouldn't, okay? This is where the entries will come in heavy, the retest of the ATR. So you'll see it go down. So as it comes here, once this trend is broken, this is where people enter. These are where the real professionals enter because they say, all right, and a lot of pros use ATR, if not every. Every professional probably uses ATR, I'm guessing. Maybe not the chandelier exit, but they use a volatility indicator of some sort. So based off of the volatility indicator, you see that it just cannot break the volatility range of this on the two day. And that is where people enter the trade, my friends, okay? And now you, just, you still see it continuing down from here, right? And you know, you know the rest, okay? And then your stop loss would be slightly above, okay? Above the ATR. Notice here, you would have probably crapped your pants because you thought it was going to go back to the upside, right? Or you just, you set your stop loss somewhere here always, okay? You would set your stop loss somewhere, you know, like slightly above here, above there. Always people would set their stop loss slightly above the candle. But what the ATR does is like, I use 2.5. Okay, I use 2.5, not 2, not 3. I like it between 2 and 3. That's better for me. So you set, this acts as a trailing stop. It acts as a trailing stop, okay? So as it keeps going, if it breaks above there, that's where you would, that's where you would close your position. But as you know, there's no point of you closing your position right now because it never broke above there. And here we are back to 2023. So if you were to have entered right on the retest there, you would still be in profit. In fact, even if it broke above this ATR in the two day, you'd still be up 19%, right? But then you say to yourself, shucks, I could have closed it right here instead to be up 30%, right? You, right does that make sense? You'd say to yourself, I could have closed it on the bottom to make 30%, but you never would have known that it was gonna not, it was gonna bounce and go above there right? Because it could have continued. It could have just gone here and then it could have continued down. So you didn't need to close it there. So when you combine things like ATR and EMA, it gives you a super powerful strategy of trailing stops and resistance breaks. And this is just the basics, guys, that I'm giving you a taste of. Wait till the course comes out like in three months. It is going to be so detailed and mind-blowing. So based off of ATR and also just simple moving average right now, there's no freaking way that we're going to enter a bull market. We're getting resistance at every single price point that we can see. Until there's some major breaks, then then I might change my bias. But let me just show you on a different time frame. Let's just show you guys on Bitfinex. For example, the last bull market that we had in 2021. Okay, Look how, first of all, let's check out the moving average. Okay, there's The moving average is going to be stupid. Okay. It's going to notice how it's like going the moving average 200 goes above it, comes down below it, above it, comes down below it, above it, above it, above it. Whenever you see action like this, where it's constantly staying above it, do you see that? Constantly staying. That was one of the signals for a bull market. That was one of the major signals for a bull market where we're just hovering, hovering, hovering. This year is extended, right? It's not hovering. It's, it's so the EMA is kind of like an elastic band that needs to eventually snap back to it. Okay, so this one here is hovering. See, but you can probably see it better on a lower time frame. Let me show you. So, for example, if I go to a let's go to bar replay, like right here. If I go to 12 hour, you can find it on the best time frame. You'll see it hover. See, you want to find the time frame where it just really hovers like that. So this is just doing great. It's not going below it. See, it's just hovering. And this happened for literally 
how many months there from February to June. So that's one of the strategies that you could use for uh, identifying bull markets. But of course, there's a lot more to it than that. But just to give you an idea of last year's bull market run that we had, okay, we have the EMA supporting it, okay, and then it takes off. And then eventually, this EMA is even too high. You don't want to use this high of an, a an EMA. You want to find one that closely hovers like that. This way, when that EMA breaks, but it, you want to find one that hovers, but it never actually breaks below it. Okay, the, mo the one closest to it. And then when it does break below it, that's where you that's where you exit the trade. So giving you guys a basic strategy. So let's try to find it. So it would be about the six hour, right? Because here it bounces, 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 bounces. So then you, the time that you would take your, your exit would probably be right around here. Okay, right around there. Sure, you took your profit as 50,000 roughly over here instead of 64,000. But you also could have taken it. You also could have taken it somewhere lower. Like you could have taken it there probably, maybe at 30, maybe at 42, maybe at 45, right? Because you don't know if this is going to break here or not. For all you know, instead of bouncing there or dropping, it could have just kept going upwards. So that's what an EMA helps you do. It helps you identify trend changes. And then if you take a look at ATR, right, you can kind of do something similar with ATR as well. So... Just going back, right? I'm just gonna bar replay it so it doesn't keep moving on me. So you see the 12 hours too much. Find a time frame where it gives you the best volatility. And that would probably be a three day. Actually, on a more volatile time, change it to a higher eight. You change it to a oh, I know you guys didn't see that, it was too fast. I double clicked on the ATR and I changed the ATR multiplier to three. I'm giving it more. So so if you take a look here, right, it never actually goes below the three day. ATR and then when you keep going eventually it's gonna go below it so as soon as it's hovering there I'm getting worried you know I'm like okay is it time to close my position so just to give you an idea let's say you went over here and you're using the three-day ATR because you've established that the three days the tightest one already so I'm gonna start here okay so that this is here this here is in December of 2020 so now the ATR is being used of the three-day so as you keep going if it breaks below that that green support, that's where you take your profit. But notice that it never actually breaks below it. Right here, you would get close. Here, here, it broke below it. So probably I would have taken my profit there, right? Because I just, I would be worried. I would have taken my profit there. But look what happens after, okay? Never actually quite gets below it, right? It was only for that one candle. So I probably would have waited maybe a day to see if it actually closed below it, but it didn't. It never turned into a red one. So you just keep going. You just keep going and you ride this thing, okay? Just ride it. There's no point of being scared. You got EMAs, you got ATRs helping you. So why would you want to take your profit? You wouldn't. You would just ride this thing, right? And here, you don't know if it's going to bounce here or go back up. Because you've entered way over here when the EMAs were still floating around. So the, the breakdown, that's where you'd probably exit. So this looks like it's about to, you know, reach the top now, right? But it doesn't. It just keeps going. But of course, you're not just going to use only this indicator. So there you go. You're out of it now. You're out of it at 43K. You've now confirmed that the bear market is over. Or sorry, the bull market is over. And the bear market has entirely changed because this 380-day rally... It breaks the ATR. So you've confirmed that it's over now, right? So just to give you guys an idea of how ATRs work. But right now, Bitcoin is just, it's not looking good, guys. I mean, do, does this look like a good pattern to you? I mean, <laughs> sure, we bounce on a little support. But haven't we seen all this shit before? Okay, let me just show you, like, let me show you the past years where we've seen it. We've seen all of this before. Let me go to BTC USD on Bitfinex. Like, there's always one last capitulation before we re reach the bottom. Look how long this guy ended up forming for. Like, we've seen all of this. We've seen it all where there's a there's an ATR that's acting as a resistance. See the red here on the daily? It's acting as a resistance, right? 
squeezes it, boom, smashes down. And then there's also the 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 200 moving average as well, where it got up here slightly. Here it barely touches it, doesn't even. It just keeps resisting. So we've seen all these patterns before, and every time people think that it's the bottom for Bitcoin, there's always that one last capitulation, and that one last capitulation is usually where people start buying. So I'm just not in the mood right now to, to buy Bitcoin in any way, anytime soon. It happened in 2014 as well, but I'm too lazy to go back there and show you guys. So this capitulation could happen, and I'm waiting on it. But as for now, I'm only holding about 300k of crypto. I don't want to hold more than that. I'll add to my position once we get one more drop, or if we actually get some bullish momentum and break across certain EMAs, and ATR ranges that are resistances. But for now, $100 movements to the upside is not gonna get me excited. Some top picks is gonna be these ones here. I decided to get rid of H bar, and I'm, I'm not gonna hold nearly as much Matic anymore. I'm gonna go all in on Algo. It's gonna be one of my favorite ones after doing so many research that it's kind of the number one coin that people are expecting to do really well, but they're being low key and hush about it because the more hush they are about it, the more they can accumulate in this particular phase is coming up, right? So in terms of a market scan, we'll do a very quick one today with you guys. It's the New Year's. I wanted to make this video more educational than anything. So to summarize Bitcoin, I'm bearish. I can't help but be bearish right now. It just makes no sense to be bullish because there are no signs of bullish momentum. So taking a look at the charts right now, let me just move this here so you can see it. Can you see this? Yeah, you can. So we don't see anything moving too much except for Sol today. Jazmai, we know exactly why Sol moved. It's because Vitalik Buterin made a tweet about how he's happy all these pieces of shits got eliminated from, um, from, from the Sol market. Like how FTX, he's basically calling out SBF and glad that they're gone, right? And now there's a chance for something else to happen. So because of that, and uh, Vitalik Buterin was happy about the developer team and said that he could promise great things. So this is why it spiked up. He tweeted it at 1.32 in the morning, my time. At 1.38, my time, it spiked up 30-40%. So, and then, and th these are hard to trade, guys. This is heavily manipulated whale, whale activity here. You know it's whale-driven because this is the one-minute candle that ended up doing how much volume here? This volume did... Um, 502, uh, five, 5 million coins. So that this was literally 50, 50, one point, hold on, hold on, 5.05. So this was like $60 million of volume injected in one minute. You're not going to catch those kind of coin guys. Impossible to catch them. Good luck. Oh, that actually it happened in 30 seconds. I'm, no, no, one minute. And just like the last one, like the last one happened in one minute. You're not going to catch coins like that, guys. It's By the time I ran from the kitchen to my computer last time to catch this coin, it was just too late. You know, it was just too late. This happened in, in literally like two minutes, right? So anyways, so if you take a look at Sol, the way it's working, like it's on my watch. It's heavily on my watch list right now. Like this broke. This, I wasn't available because I was out. See this trend line? That broke. It was a huge trend line. It wicked right there. So maybe you could have caught it, but not likely either, you know? Here's on a one minute or 30 second. I mean, by the time you noticed it, after the 30 seconds, it would have this candle would have been formed on the breakout there. And then you maybe could have caught this one, but what are the chances, right? Almost impossible to catch Saul. And then after that, Saul right now is definitely hitting a resistance, you know? It's hitting like an 8-hour or a 12-hour ATR resistance, definitely. And it's also, look at the, let's see. Well, there's not that much data to suggest otherwise, but the 3-hour, 200 EMA is getting hit. I don't see how much further it can go unless Bitcoin shoots up, right? This did make technically three waves already, which is a corrective wave. I don't think it's going to make a five wave. I think it's going to just follow Bitcoin for whatever it does. Maybe the top 
but but you never know it could be a one two three four five right so just using here we see Saul obviously get some good movement now let's take a look at the screener so my screener I use something called I macros okay I macros uh, do you see it here nope you don't see it but it's, it's this little button at the top here okay I macros I have a bunch of scripts that I've programmed and because I have a bunch of scripts programmed there it helps me um, it helps me automate a lot of this screening process it goes through these guys one by one so it basically clicks on here and then clicks there every five minutes and clicks here again and then it clicks here again and then clicks here then it clicks here then it clicks there it does that every five minutes and it's on a different screen so this way I don't have to keep checking it myself I'll just notice it every five minutes so first thing I do is I go to the overview I see nothing okay the daily overview, I look for things that have moved more than 5% with over 40 million in volume. So there's nothing, nothing at all today has moved over 5% with, but I don't know why Saul doesn't show up. Let me, oh, this is why it's not on the daily. So I always put that on the daily, okay? So it's got to do more than 40 million in volume and 5% movement. So you see Saul, right? You see LTC, you see LDO. LDOs are real shit coin to trade, guys. I'm telling you, there's no liquidity. I tried trading it yesterday with a fifty thousand dollar buy, and it just there was like zero point eight percent slippage. So I'm like, fuck this, I'm out. Like fifty thousand dollars, point eight percent slippage. You're not gonna get the prices that you want. So today there's Jasmine, APT, Mask, Adam, LTC. All these guys have decent volume, and today they've all moved a decent amount. But the biggest one is, of course, I'm just going to type in USDTP. So type in USDTP to filter it. So there are these guys. You can put them on your watch list if you want. So let's just say you take out everything right now. Okay. Just put on your watch list. Then we can filter through them after just to see what's hot. Okay. So you can just click right here. See the little button. And then there's, you, there's a flag. You can choose a color, blue, red, whatever. I choose mine red. Okay. And then it puts it on a list here. If you put it on blue, it'll make another list. Watch. See, now there's a blue list. But you don't, You can choose whatever color you want. So now the next thing I do is I look for a coin to trade right now. Is there a coin to trade right now that's moved over 3% in 15 minutes? Nothing. So I move on. Is there a coin to trade right now as well that might have moved 3% in one hour? Nothing. Okay. Is there a coin that has moved 3% in four hours? nothing so if there's nothing that's moving right now in the 15 minutes in the past hour or in the past four hours what this must mean by deduction is that the move that we saw from the other chart the overview on the daily it happened throughout the day so it happened earlier than four hours ago or more than four hours ago it means that you missed your opportunity already okay so unfortunately there's not a coin to trade right now but there was a trade so now let's look for something that's out of this world for our side is there anything that's out of this world for our side nah nothing on the daily except for these guys that are kind of low but there's no movement what about right now is there a coin that moved in the past hour that's like over 80 rsi okay that's like over 80 rsi in the past hour that maybe we can short wow there's apt is there anything really low nope okay there's no coins that are below 30 there's only coins over 70 so let's just look at apt and see what the heck it's doing right now in the hour so what we know is that some coins in fact many coins are reaching the oversold zones in the past hour okay so this is what that's telling you we know that apt adam sol ltc they're all on our list already so that's extremely important to notice okay so these guys so it's not helping us that much the rsi let's go to the four hour see if anything is really oversold in the four hour all right, Ape is doing something. Okay, Ape is getting up there. So let's just put Ape on our list here. I don't like trading Algo. It's got too low volume. Right, we already have LDO. DYDX, we know it's it was bouncing from the dollar range already. I do not trade DOT as well. So just to bring everybody to Ape's attention, Ape is looking like this. Okay, Ape is looking like this right now. Where... Was it on the two-day that I drew it? Yeah, the two-day. So if you go the two-day, what you're seeing is something like that. Okay? 
So now you're seeing it squeeze into here. So it, it, it hit the resistance a few days ago on ape, right? If you take a look, December 13th, it hit it. Actually, it's not showing the rest of the candles there. So right here, we're hitting it again. See that? So now it leaves me to wonder which way is it going to go. So this guy should be prioritized high, really high right now, because it could do one of two things. It's been, res it's been building this support and resistance for a long time now, and it's reaching an apex by January, just a few days. See, notice here, it's been since August, 152 days. So best thing to do is to set your alert, okay? Just set your alert. Let it add an alert for the high of anywhere you want. Go to greater than every time. Make sure your volume is on. It always helps. So then if it breaks above here, actually I'll go lower. I'll know right away, okay? I'm not going to catch the breakout likely, but if I do catch it, it's going to retest somewhere there. It's going to retest some EMA or ATR, and then I'm going to buy on the dip right there, or I'm going to buy it on the breakout. That's the strategy that I'm going to employ for APE. I'd rather be safe than and not be caught in a bull trap, right? That's important. But it can also very well go down as well. I think Ape has some major plays it can make. Okay. So watch Ape. Put down your watch list. Okay, then we go to we go to our side. We did that already. Okay, let's go to the weekly gators and losers. So today is only Monday. So you can't really go to the weekly gainers and losers, which are looking at the week for what's moved over 10%. And the reason for that is because it's only been one day, right? Only one day so far. So we know Saul is doing something which we went over right now, but I think we've already missed it. So let's see if it's going to end up resisting right about now, right? Let's see if it's going to end up hitting. Where are we at for... We're at the hit the golden ratio pretty much. Let's see if Saul can get here. That's what I'm interested in. Like, I'm interested in Saul around there because this seems to be a great zone. So I'm going to look for a breakout, obviously, above this high. So I'm going to add my alert here for greater than every time. So now Saul's checked. LTC, I hate trading LTC, man. It just It's like so slow. But here it did move significantly, 15%. So it doesn't really have any identifiable patterns. It kind of hit this resistance range already, right? So, so it's a difficult coin to pinpoint. I mean, you can't really trade coins that do this, guys. That have one gigantic green candle upwards. It's like impossible, man. You know? LDO, same thing with LDO. Jasmine is a little bit more consistent with the way it's moving. It's trending huge on this like two hour ATR it's just going right now so you know if it hits this ATR support there I might consider longing it the volume is half decent what's the volume for Jasmine? Two hundred seventeen is pretty decent so yeah I want to watch this right I'm just going to check on it every so often I'll probably just put an alert here for if it goes lower Go to less than every time. And I want to see what's going to happen if it breaks to the downside and perhaps gets closer to this ATR range of the 90 minute and then go from there. APT, I just don't want to trade these coins, guys, that makes a spike like that. So I'm going to remove it. I'm going to remove LTC, LDO, APT, we Mask as well. Mask is pretty consistent with its movement always. So that's why I'm a big fan of Mask. So right now, it's trying to break above the 5-hour. That's pretty huge, the 5-hour um, ATR range. So I'm going to see if it's going to retrace backwards and bounce off of here. So I'm going to put an alert for lower than or less than here. So this is the 5-hour time frame where it's the ATR is the most important. So if it gets to roughly here somewhere, right, and, and it stays above this red line and it breaks above it, I'm, let's say that it, it bounces above it, right? It comes back downwards and then it break and then it bounces off of it. It's go time once this is broken. Okay? That's how you treat these plays when you when you want to catch breaks rather than just buying up breaks all the time, which are riskier, especially during times like now. And then there's Adam, which I don't like to trade Adam. It's like a really good long-term hold, but it's not a coin I like to trade. 
not only that, it did the same thing, right? You know, did those huge, it, it made these huge candles. And what, these are one minute candles, by the way, I know. So I don't want to trade these coins that are doing 5%, 10 minute, 10%, 20% candles in one minute. They're not consistent. They're too unpredictable. Even though you can make a lot of money if you got in early, the chances of you jumping in while they're moving, it's impossible. I want to find the coin with steady volatility, not inconsistent volatility. So my pick for today is only Sol, Jasmine, Mask. And I think this stream has been going on really long already, guys. I'm going to check some of the questions. You guys don't have any questions. What if recession turns to collapse? Great. If recession turns to collapse, I'd be incredibly happy. If we went into like a mini depression, awesome. Because we'll get enough, like the market, it's eventually going to recover. It's not like the whole world's going to go to shits or we're going to be living in the boondocks, you know? Eventually, the government's going to create some sort of system with massive bailouts. And and just like, it, just like how history has always taught us. Now, I'm no economist, but what I do know is that it's not going to be the dark ages times. So eventually, things will, will recover. And that's going to reinforce Bitcoin even more. Because that's why Bitcoin was created. It was to fight these idiots controlling money. Right? So I don't think Bitcoin's going anywhere. And we're only going to see much higher prices in the future. 10 years from now, guaranteed that Bitcoin, in my opinion, will be over $200,000. That's going to be huge. And I'll only be carrying Bitcoin and some alts like Ethereum in the future. And I definitely don't plan to day trade for the next five years, put it that way. I'm done with day trading, guys. I'm at my maximum almost. I think one more bull market of day trading and I'm done. Just show me the money and I'm out. And you guys are going to be here with me after you all take my bull market strategy course. So I'm going to end it here. What's your thoughts on Binance Earn possibility? It's a good idea to stake some coins and increase the quantity of the coins during 2023 and prepare. Yeah, so the Earn feature is something that I use too, but not that often because the Earn is just staking through Binance. Sure, it's a great way to hedge against these drops because you're earning something per day. Like some coins will get you up to 20% a year. Like literally 20%. So that's huge. Like for example, Algo gets you 6.5% a year, right? The earn is a great feature if you're holding and if you're not going to sell. But another pro tip is why keep your money on an exchange and, and go through them? They're getting something off of your stake. You know that, right? Off of everyone's stake and the pool that they're putting your money in, they're getting something out of it 100%. So why stake through Binance when you can put it in your nano ledger and stake there yourself and get 100% of it? That makes a little bit more sense, right? Put it in your ledger. This way it's actually in a cold wallet and it's still staking. Don't put it on an exchange. It's not even your money. If you're going to hold something, anything at all, if any, if Almeida Research, you know, Celsius, FTX, all these big guys have taught us something, it's don't keep your money on an exchange. Because there's still a chance of you getting screwed over. Just because it's Binance doesn't mean it couldn't happen. It was FTX and everybody thought the exact same. So it's better for you to keep it either in a, even in a hot wallet. A hot wallet like MetaMask is a, probably a lot more safe than, than, uh, than somewhere like Binance, in my opinion. So anyways, Phil, what are the main things you're looking at doing the alts research analysis to decide whether to long-term portfolio? Oh, that could not be answered in a really short period of time, but it will be answered in here. It'll be answered in my new course coming out. Basically, hottest coins, right? My portfolio, basically how to choose hot coins. But of course, like the basic things that I'm going to do is spend a shit amount of time researching the coins fundamental analysis. I'm going to research the developer team as well. Right, I'm going to check every single person's background. I'm going to read the white paper. I'm going to check out the feasibility reports of it. I'm going to compare it to different projects as well that are doing the same thing. Like, for example, if you're looking at, you know, layer one coins, you may as well compare every single one to see how they stand out, see how they differ, how they contrast. But, you know, it takes a really, really smart person to be able to figure out the differences yourself. So in my opinion, just watch a lot of videos where people are comparing coins or talking about the coin 
because they're going to compare it to other coins as well. Because if you did all of your own research, that's a lot of work, man. Like, you know, to create Excel sheets, to document differences, just watch a lot of videos on the project itself. And you're going to be able to learn about how they compare to similar coins of similar technology, right? So that's the best way I can recommend doing it. And also use Twitter, right? Twitter is a really good source. Go to uh, like uh, Bitcoin forums as well. Great place. But I don't tr don't trust the mainstream news, man. Like CoinDesk and shit like that. Coin Telegraph, Bitcoin.com. Those big big guys, like don't trust them. You know, like they're probably paid. They're, most of them are paid advertisements. Everything that you see that's biased, they're all paid. It's better to rec to watch like some unbiased dude that talks about altcoins. Like like <clears throat> a really good guy to follow. I don't know if you guys can see here. Oh yeah, you can. For example, if I typed in what is Algorand or Solana, this is the guy I follow. He does really cute stuff. Okay, his, his name is his, his Whiteboard in this Crypto. this video, we are going to explore Whiteboard Crypto. And he doesn't talk about like anything very biased. He only talks about unbiased stuff. So if you go here, he's going to make everything into an animation. So just Plain for example, if you watch this video, Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto. Right, the he's going to make everything in a little animation for you to see. So it's really, really helpful, in my opinion, to go to this guy's page to learn about the coins. And he also compares it to a lot of other coins of similar technology. He talks about why it could be prominent in the future, why there could be a huge demand for, in this technology as well. It talks about its limitations, etc. as well. So a little short 10 minute video, you'll get a lot of information and I'm sure you'll find more resources. So I hope that answered your question, Dexter. All right, well, since you guys are not really asking a lot of questions, I'm going to call it quits. It's been 46 minutes now. I'm finally going to grab some breakfast. So I hope this video has helped you a lot in terms of learning about some of the indicators that I'll be using. Be excited for the course, guys. $124 for this new 30-hour course that if you don't get it, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna ban you. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now. Take care. Thanks for watching and tuning in, everybody, and Happy New Year's once again.